Seems taking about as long as Birdie Box does finish his homework, meaning forever. And, uh, well, hopefully we're going to get started soon. TM, I've been told they've been pushing the buttons and we're close to live. Uh, it, just to remind everybody, it's not Inferno, it's Mirage. Nuke, yes. And then Inferno that we're going to be taking a look at. Here is that beautiful look at Mirage. Uh, can you do the jump right there? The the little uh, jump off the, the wall of the, the car? The wall, well, the, the, the window, the, the van? No, absolutely not. Absolutely I, not. I, I see people in warm up doing it sometimes, and I'm just like, you're wasting your time. You're never gonna hit that in a match. What, what are you doing? I've um, seen it happen before in a match, but those are like good players, and not me. Yeah, yeah but seeing it happen in a montage doesn't count. You don't see all the failed attempts, Vincent. I, I mean, listen, I watched JW do it in a live match, so. Oh, does that count? okay. Then it's just, it's just a fight. No, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, he's pretty good though. So. <laughs> I I guess to be fair, not 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 as not that many players that we talk that we talk about are that good. Um, Wayne State though, maybe that good. We'll have to see. The, our expectations are high. And just to reiterate, Butler University on the other hand, both new to the the Nace Star League here at the Varsity Premier side of things. Um, mm -hmm. But Viking is the the guy to watch for Butler, isn't he? Uh, definitely for sure. Uh, definitely the most experienced player, though. At least, at least we can tell from our, you know, very confidential sources, Vincent, uh, as we do get into this uh, pistol round. It's Wayne State to start on that T side, and uh, these player, these team, these names do not look familiar at all. These are not the two. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, these right. are different names. Uh, we'll, we'll have to adjust a little bit, but. Pistol round underway, it's that first fragment towards the B site, and I'm um, looking to be planted, but there's some contact from the Arch Pillars. The trade comes in towards market. 2v3 now in for this retake situation. Butler, they've got to get into this bomb site. They've got to find the kills to make it work, as time's starting to tick. Viking needs to start finding some heads. Nice, uh, was that a mid-site smoke? <laughs> Something or another like that. Viking is, uh, the guy we were talking about. Got to deal with two, and I'm Uvania. I'm going to be taking the taking the frag. Name we didn't necessarily expect to see. Yeah, I'm gonna, not necessarily. I'm going to expect, uh, that's I am's, probably. Maybe we see ping in there, at least. Yeah, um, hashtag save the ping. We don't see e ego, which is very upsetting. That is tragic. Yeah, I imagine we were, it's just a case of, like, Steam name versus Face It name or something. So it is what yeah. it is, but um, second round... Uh, MP5 on the board. Uh, you love to see it. I, I won't comment more on that. I find it's a really fun gun to use. Uh, doesn't mean it performs well though. I mean, up against these guns, it's gonna perform valiantly, as you just see. Two quick frags. Is is that Ichigoru? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. I want to hear your best effort first. I would have said that. Ichi Goryu. Yeah. Okay. Darn. I or, was I would, just... or I would have abbreviated and said Ichi or something. Well, that's just one, isn't it? I don't know. Is it Ichi one in like Japanese? I couldn't that tell what it means? you. Hold on. I need to go deep into the, the realms of fact checking. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, we can talk about a butler approaching this third round. They've come into it with some M4s so out of Hamas as well. The utility is starting to be depleted already. Not even a single ball top left on the board is contact towards the window. Bernie will find that first frag. The first for Butler in this gun round, and not really an opportunity for Wayne to trade from it. But grouped up towards ramp. It seems like it's going to be an A hit. Can she Hanging around on the lurk towards underpass, spotted out as well as the execute comes through. It's going to be Ninja with the Famas in hand to defend, likely to be first contact. But Wayne, they've reconsidered. They're bailing out, targeting elsewhere. Bomb in hand as well. They've got resources in hand to do so. Uh, fact check true is is the number one. Mm. I don't know if you, I tried. To, I tried to play it out loud. It didn't work that well though. <laughs> Did you figure out what Gore you meant by chance? Uh, no, no, no. I wasn't interested. Sorry. Okay. But speaking of, Ichigoryu going to be making their way into the B site. There is a player here. He's hanging out. In, oh, okay, that's a one-way ticket. The next round, Burnout, though, going to connect. Keep things even even better for Butler. Is Ichi. Oh, another brilliant shot. That's going to be Fantix going down. This cat player, really the one to put the nail in this coffin. 
Viking swings through, puts Ashy into this 1v2 situation, but unspotted. Spotting a barrel as well, transitioning with the spray to find that first kill and information on the second. The grenade does well to connect, and Viking clutches up to win Butler their first round of Mirage. Yeah, and Viking stepping up as we expected. 1v2, he up the victory. Or rather, I mean, to be fair, 1v1, but got the player on catwalk as well. So, we'll get the first round. Wayne State, that investment last round was a little bit of a bonus, but they don't have the full money to buy back up. Save the ping will be working just a deagle in hand, but has the full utility to pull that back, and he'll be throwing the top mid smoke. It's Viking. Ooh, applying good utility early on, but bad on the spray. Ishiguru with a nice shot, taking the main man out for Butler. TMF still hanging around, though, in case we want to try to regress towards mid. They won't. It's another A execute to come through. Smoke, I think that's going to go towards CT. Stairs, very standard jungle to follow suit as well, but there's really no defenders sitting on the bomb side itself, so you could probably expect, expect some of a retake here from the CT side. And the kills they can get early on would be much appreciated. Oh, ping. With a big connection, Ninja there with the FAMAS is doing a lot of damage. No frag to be had, though, unfortunately. It'll be Armovania. The additional kill. It leaves Phantom X in position to take one out. But 1v4, that's what was required. Already has the first. Needs to go for more. AK is the right weapon to do it with as he finds the first swing. Isn't there for the trade, but that means Phantom's gonna have to look harder for the second frag. And well, Nova's gonna be a good position to catch him off guard. Phantom will lose out in the clutch. And Wayne, they'll pick up right where they left off in that third round. Yeah, that, that take towards A was fantastic. It's standard, it's easy. There's nothing abnormal about it, but already it's very effective. Three smokes get you onto the site. Nobody was actually committed to it. And a lot of good damage from the Famasum Ninja just didn't quite connect a full frag beyond just that first. A lot of sound towards mid. Viking's going to be aware of this, but it's just the Deagle in play. I might just be able to find the timing for the kill, and he does. Headshot. This ping is dropped. No trade possible for the T side, but now in the 4v4, a better chance to work with the Ninja. That's an excellent spray with the PC50. You don't see that too often connecting. It's now a recoverable rifle as well. Wayne Esports on the back foot. Yeah, Ninja doing a good job of playing a one-way smoke there as well. Phantom. Ooh, just about had a chance. Ishiguro on the other side of the window. Slow things down and three on four. With the smokes fading, Viking, Ninja. Their crossfire on this A side is going to be critical. Rotation for Wayne State as they move away from the mid area. That they took. And Viking caught trying to collect the free AK. Nothing free in this world. And just in such a rat position right now. Found the kill to P250 earlier, but probably to be isolated by that Molotov. And she will find another frag as well. It's TMF to be put straight into the clutch situation with this recovered AK-47. This time around, though. No armor, well, though. Yeah, and, and a lot more difficult to get into the bomb site as well. He's got a single flashbang to work with up against these three rifles. It might just be worth the save. They can invest into the next round, probably, with some loss bonus. Instead, it looks like he'll make an attempt, at the very least. The st steps have revealed his position, and Ichiguri will be the one to swing through for the frag. It's a solid fourth round, though there were a few hiccups. Yeah, I, I mean, Wayne State kind of starting out. Losing two players, it wasn't looking good. P250 long range. Eagle headshot on the mid player swinging. That was Viking to find that. But then they do a good job of just waiting patiently, grouping back up at the A ramp and converting a three on five into their into their victory. Of course, you know, against just pistols, that's not as big of a deal, but Viking. Ooh, I'm gonna catch a trade here. This ping tagged low from that duel from Burnout. I'm a Vanya. They've already got a lot of utility here. There's two players set up, and they found the catwalk player. Already a flashbang to push out. The bench player nearly caught Ooh. out, but Phantom, oh my goodness. We'll catch two. 
Okay, well, he combines both of those kills and oh, barely a way back into the round for Ichikoruyu and an avenue in towards the safe side. He's lacking the bomb, though. That's in the hands of his teammate as he works his way towards CT. Viking is well positioned to handle it, <laughs> playing Oki on with that flash grenade and an awkward situation to be thrown into the clutch at the very least. It's split. He, he has a good opportunity to do this. They're split well. He's got time on his side. The question is, does he have the right angles? Viking in a great spot to deny this as well. Here comes that duel. Viking, paying attention. Going to get the line up and Butler have the round. Viking, 3K in that one to pick it up. Both the rounds that Butler have picked up have been, I would say, majority courtesy of Viking. Have they not? Oh, yeah, I, I would definitely agree. I mean, he, he's 7-1. and one. It's it, it's definitely not something you can ignore. I'll put it that way. So the expectation from Butler, especially with Viking being one of the heavy hitters, coming to fruition in the early stages of this map, we have a little bit of a weird buy. You can see a bit of money left in the pocket for both Ashi and Avranova, but Shigoro with the opening pick, and there's that. One individual that we've been talking about going down early. Flashes move forward. Ninja, close range. MP9 continuing to fire. Has to go for the reload and the swing, but that will deny any further damage done. So the plant should be able to come here shortly, unless Burnout can deny. Oh, a little bit slow on that. No, will deny. Burnout taking out Avernova, but Ashi moves forward. Connecting the shots at Phantom, another big double. These late round situations, man, they just keep getting so back and forth. It, it feels like either team, when thrust into the clutch situation, could probably perform. And I mean, Butler now bringing the cl scoreline closer and closer. They've brought an op into the round as well. It's it's looking promising for sure. It's uh, Wayne State uh, definitely. Uh, it, it, let me put it this way: the game's a lot closer than we I think, I think both of us expected it to be at this point. Yeah, I think we build this as a little bit more one-sided, and Butler has shown up in a big way. And that's what I love to see with these teams that I, you know, we don't know a ton about. It's, you know, it's unfortunate sometimes we, we get things wrong because we haven't yet seen what these guys have to offer, but to see them show out in, in, in a positive way, you know, unexpected as such, it's, it's brilliant. It means we get to be surprised. Big fan of surprises. Save the ping. Nothing surprising there. An opening shot with the Glock, in fact. Not surprising. <laughs> not surprising that the Glock not, kills the Not fully surprising that ping gets the kill. Ah, uh, okay. Understood. Yeah. Uh, the Glock part, certainly a bit more surprising. Vikings going to collect two more. And Butler have a stranglehold on this round, especially now with Ashy, the only one left. And Ashy will have to tuck tail and try to look elsewhere but in the apartments phantoms on the hunt actually a matter of time here as they want to swing through it's tied scoreline um at, at the beginning of this game it definitely seemed like it was going the way of wayne state but uh the tables have turned and uh, baller university they're in a good position here to extend this lead if they want it I'm not gonna lie you said phantoms on the hunt and i thought you were talking about valor and i was gonna give you such a hard time i'm i just i'm not gonna comment yeah i know sorry uh, for those who don't know, I, I do both Valorant and Counter-Strike, and sometimes it's tough, man. <laughs> sometimes I just get, get confused. 4-4. Four four. Nothing confusing about this round. Wayne State going to be pulling the A. Oh, oh, no. Ashy, come on. That's literally the easiest one in the game. Get the Why Not clip. <laughs> get the Why Not clip. Check out the LTA Broadcasting Twitter if you don't know what we're talking about. Oh. Viking, though, continuing to find frags. He doesn't have traded through the edge of that smoke, but over the top of CT, no angle to work with. As Wayne State continue to find frags, Ninja just getting spammed into oblivion. Two players left standing for the side of Butler, and, well, they're both in a position to fight from at the very least spawn. They will look to be planted as... Nova does swing through for the frag. TMF now... Look at how low oh, these players are. So, yeah, I was just about to say it. And a flashbang. He's going to get two. Yeah, there's the low HP coming to fruition. Has time to reload. And a kit in hand as well. TMF 
Oh, he's a little jumpy, a little nervous, it seems. CMF looking. Ooh. He's got Ooh. another. One HP left on this final player. Will he be oh. able to? No, I'm Vania. Going to connect for the fifth round of Wayne State. Butler and TMF doing oh. so much work. I'm, I don't know if you could notice, but I saw some handshaking there for sure. There was definitely oh, yeah. some nerves coming through in that clutch, but uh, three kills there. That's uh, that's, a, that's amazing. That's impressive. It, it does so much work. Look at the economy of Wayne State. Losing that many rifles is detrimental in the gutter. to their progress. Yeah, like the ping, he's got no utility to work with. Yeah, ping usually doesn't work with the utility very much. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, that's that's outrageous. I'm sorry, Pig. Talking about talking about a different Pig, Viking. In, inside joke there. Don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, a little bit. Viking, big frag who's been having big impact all all game. Oh, 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 okay. I don't know what he saw. He must have saw something on the radar because I sure didn't see that that player was visible. This is a little bit more of the Wayne State I think we were expecting, but they still got Phantom in the back of this B bomb sign. This is a very difficult angle to fight for sure against this A1S. As he does end up holding on for just a little while longer, but he needs to buy more time. As his head gets ripped clean off its shoulders, it's Ninja to be put into the clutch this time around. It feels like every single round it's somebody new. Oh, but he's got first low HP on Amavania as well. Actually, the only one healthy. Gonna replenish those bullets before moving forward with the reload. Ninja taking a close look at where these players could be trying to set things up. Oh, he's going to spot him out. Not looking the right way. Ashy, and he's got another Ninja with a clutch. Oh, my goodness. 1v2. And that's a beautiful way to clean things up and tie the score 5-5. Five to five. It was 1v3, Vincent. You forgot about the player towards the apartments. Oh, yeah, you're right. He got all three, baby. That's incredible. Butler tying the game up off some fancy shooting from Ninja 035. Got to get that last name in there, too. Yeah. Oh, no. Deagle in the situation can be deadly. Rushing out. Look at the distance that is being closed here. You don't want to get in the range of that spam and paying almost a chance for a second Glock kill in this game. Ninja will make sure that that doesn't come to fruition. It's now trapped towards the ramp side of things. Butler will rotate through. This looks to be a relatively done deal. Not going to lie, Burnout probably should have died three times over there beforehand, but ultimately will fall anyway. Viking with a nice 3K. 14 and 7, but Ninja 12 and 9. This is... Insane. The scoreline six and five. If you got two players on the side of Butler University, which looked like they're playing in a different game. I mean, that's because they are. They're playing the winning game. Ah. Yeah. Wait, and the rest they of them aren't. Well, yeah, everybody's kind of playing the winning game at this point, aren't they? No losers in the game of Counter Strike. Everyone's just trying to get better. With the mid that's control. False. There's uh, absolutely losers in the game of Counter Strike. Listen. You only lose if your mental's bad. Okay, we'll go with that. Burnout with a nice shot, AWP. He's been pretty good just being able to deal with the pressure. Unfortunately, that pressure overwhelms at this point. Ishiguro going to take advantage. They're going to be Amavania to collect an additional frag. That's out on A. With Ninja down, that's two more. Viking as well. The two big fraggers. Butler gone in a 4v2. Wrong side of the map, though. For TMF and Phantom pushing through the apartments. It's only going to be information and potentially a place to save for the CT side as Wayne stayed. I think they're going to be able to do it. It should be a tied up scoreline once again. It's definitely been a back and forth affair. Neither team, I mean, it, it, to contrast this last series, we're not seeing the 16K, um, you know, mounds of money built into the bank. Both teams are the kind of one kill away from being broke every single round. Yeah, this is this is uh, paycheck to paycheck purchases right now for both teams, particularly as we see the save, the CTs of Butler doing what they can to keep that economy healthy. And with that, another tied score. 
Six six. Wayne State bringing it back. Ishiguru. AWP recovered as well. Haven't really seen the op for Wayne State yet. No, but Butler will see a UMP being bought. That's not really something you see too often anymore. Oh, it's the worst. We'll talk about an entry though. Straight in, spotting a second player as well. The second shot won't connect, and there's still a third left to be found. This could be a trap. They're all here. There's literally everyone. Ninja tapping away. Damage done. Evernova with a nice shot. It's going to be TMF down, and Evernova with another. Wait, they should know where he is. Yeah, yeah they killed really the player should. earlier. Well, but they don't. They have no idea. This is going to be free for the first frag. Evernova needs to clutch. But the, despite the headshot, the armor works out in the 4K for Evernova. How do we keep getting into these situations? <laughs> it's it's crazy. Like, every single round, there's just something new happening. It's like It feels like we're watching the most bizarre game of Counter-Strike ever. Like, these aren't common situations you usually find yourself in. The, the kills, the, the sequence of events, it, it seems unnatural. It's so... It's just so strange, but I'm loving it. Every single moment just keeps delivering. Yeah, this has been a big delivery. Oh, that's a big spot. Ishiguru gonna find one. There's the second. Abernova chiming in. The third for Ishiguru. And no, deny the quad. Save the ping to close. Eight rounds for Wayne as they take the half at least in the lead. I think Wayne still will be looking for that at the very least. Uh... Uh, just a reminder, this was the pick of Butler University, and so expecting them to be more performant in this map at the very least compared to the second, they've been doing a good job, but closing out the seventh round would mean a lot to them. Up towards mid, Ichigoryu had success in that last round, not so much this time around. That was incredibly ambitious as well. Yes. Just, uh, also not ready to scope, just inspecting weapon. <laughs> You, you you aim faster when you inspect. That is definitely not true. Feel free to correct me on Twitter. <laughs> Where can we find you? Oh, I don't know. Okay. I, for, I forget, you know. I'm not going to plug for you. <laughs> it's fun. It's not necessary. There's a game of Counter-Strike to be watched. This. I'm enjoying this game of Counter-Strike. Ping's going to bring things to even. Four on four. Well, that nade's going to break the the vent here, but so much audio being made. Guys, Wayne State's fellas. trapped. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not sure if either team realizes where the other players are, but I mean, there's that opening up towards this speed bomb site. The second will reveal himself, though, when there's another player in towards the apartments as well. So as much as Wayne State might feel invited in towards this B site, there is yet another trap to be laid in, another layer to be peeled back. Zara Avernova just tries to keep it going. Fires off another shot, and the timing just doesn't work out towards that apartments player. Finally revealed, and I think Ashley trying to hang on, just won't be able to. It will be Butler to find themselves that seventh round. About as close as it gets, Vincent, as we head into the second half. Then lead indeed for Wayne, as they do win the half. But, you know, some, some good and the bad, I, I think, from Wayne mm -hmm. State and Butler with some very impressive rounds over the course of that, that half. Took a couple of clutches, but... You know, that's uh, that's, I'd like that's to sometimes what you need. I, I'd like to know how many clutches we had in that last half. I, I feel like I would be surprised by the number. I think it was only actually like two. Oh, but it was like like four or five attempts. It felt like seven. It did. Ooh. What is this setup? I don't even understand. Success. Ishiguru. Yeah, Ishiguru is like, uh, what? Taking the shots. <laughs> oh, boy. oh my. That's how you entry in a game of Counter-Strike. Watch and learn, everybody. Oh, I say that. It's obviously yeah. the player on the side of Butler University drops to their knees. Evernova struggling to hold on, though. It's Viking. It's open space for the bomb. And 2v2 and rotated in through market. This is a, a 2v2 oh, they spotted just away this T side. Yeah. And they got a check here. A great crossfire setup. Beautiful work. And, oh, I thought that was. Oh, I, th I thought it was too. I thought right. I, I thought it was TMF there. Yeah. yeah. Oh <laughs> boy, that would have been insane. I've hit those before though. Sometimes you just gotta turn on the burst and hope it hits. You know, the bird burst. Uh, moving on. <laughs> um. <laughs> <T> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Trade, you understand? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I follow it, so don't worry. Uh, the question is, will you follow Ping with this USP as he... I'm really hoping he walks in towards Palace here to try to hunt for Burner. I will follow Ping anywhere he goes. Uh, you, will you follow him to the grave in round number 17? I will indeed. Uh, I'll see you next round. Alright, understood. Looks like it's just me. This butler pierced the way through this early A defense. The USP is starting to deal some damage onto Burnoot, but he will recover for the frag. The remaining player is nowhere to be found. Butler may be a little bit confused as the bomb goes down, but as that smoke spade, they'll start to receive the other end of those guns. Timing here is crazy. W what? <laughs> I don't even know how that's happened. USP to find the frag. Viking head on a swivel to find another. And each shoot with that remaining USP. Stuck towards taken isolated as Burnu taps them down. The lead swaps once again. Vincent, have you returned with me for the next round? I have indeed. I'm back with Save the Ping. It was an interesting uh, situation there, you know, with like death and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Did you notice anything while you were spectating? I did. I actually noticed that the Viking is playing on crazy good sense to, to make that 180. So. That, that just does. got long arms. Or that, you know. Possible monkey arm scenario. Classic mid control setup here for Butler. Not mid smoke. Though, it's like the. Uh, what, what would it be called? It, the, the less than ideal mid control? Save the ping. This is anything. <laughs> oh, anything, <okay>. oh <laughs> anything and everything possible right there. Yeah, what I was definitely going follow for. ping into that situation. Bomb gets dropped towards Cat. There's just no success here on the T side. It just rounds back and forth. Uh, uh, last bullet there, I think, connecting for Phantom, but almost a flawless round for Wayne State, just finding not only the right kills, but all the right timings for them to come through. I mean, it was almost flawless, but it was a team ace. Everybody picked up a frag. Team effort, nice to see for Wayne State. But Doing their work? Indeed, Butler heading into this round. They are going to be buying fully, but it is a little limited. They're just a couple of flashbangs and smokes are lacking and you know Molotovs and such. Also working with a Mac-10 onto Phantom, who's quietly had a great game, by the way. It's situations like this where sometimes you look at Mirage and go, this is where you you would want CTs to kind of get in the faces of the T side, try to aggress somewhat and get ahead of the curve because then you end up in situations like this where there's just so much control for the T side and you don't really know how you want to punish, but I guess winning that duel towards window would be one way to do it, but a flurry of frags the other way and oh my gang barely has his gun out or his gun put away as the bomb is dropped. How does Ashy get out of that alive? I guess that's the max end for you. Yeah, tough, tough situation for a Mac-10 to be in, really. Especially in a tied game. 3v3 here. It's a rendezvous back in the mid-area. One in the ladder room. Say. Surely going to be the case. Burn it. Oh, what a timing. This was being checked only moments ago, and burn it. Couldn't quite find it. Flashbang out. Needs to one, but save the ping. Can't find any. Staying alive there might just have been more important because now uh, not only has the bomb been put down, but you've got this player holding the rotation, or you did at least in the hands of Burn Newt. He's going to hear these footsteps and funny information as he does end up and finding that second player as well. And so 2v2, but plenty of time for this Butler University sign to position themselves. And they've got this crossfire set up. This is going to be a hard one to break, and there's absolutely nothing for the Wayne State side to dissect it. I mean, they have the single flash, but yeah, two kits. Starting to try and move in. Spotted a little bit late. Ashy goes down. It's TMF with the frag, and it is Aranova, or Evernova, excuse me, going the other direction. It'll be Butler retaking that lead. It's been back and forth the whole way. We've really not seen more than like a four round lead at the very beginning, have we? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, this is just, it's the economy of Counter-Strike, man. You went around, but you had one player left standing, and now you're broke, and the other team had a bomb plant or something, and so <laughs> they've got more money than you. It, it's just so weird. But this is the way Mirage sometimes is. You don't always need the better weaponry to come out on top. Sometimes just finding the right timing, swinging. Um, 
the right angles. It can find you the right kills to just break down an entire offensive and make it so the the people throwing the utility, the, the players left standing, have nothing to uh, stand on. Yeah, especially the CT side. You don't always need the, the perfect weaponry. I think that's particularly true. We've seen, full... we've, we've already seen a Nova tonight. We saw that get some kills. We did see that get some kills. It was uh, pretty entertaining. Butler. Going to be moving straight for a B rush. It's going to be flashes as well. Smoke a little late. Viking leading the way. It's going to be Avernova trying to play the support angle here. Bomb. Nearly going to go down. And too many players to shoot at for Avernova. Long range is Amavania. And save the pink as well. Collecting a shot. On the flank, Ishiguru is so close. That's Phantom. Good. Phantom isn't going to find it. Viking's still alive, but it's just down to the one. Did you ask for anyone else to be in this situation, though? I mean, you probably could, but Viking's been the one to deliver this game. Unfortunately, in this instance, he won't. The HP, though, is so low. You could just see how close it could have been. No kit. They'll make it work nonetheless. 10 to 10. Both teams in double digit rounds. <laughs> we, we could arguably see an overtime. I'm I'm expecting it. Uh, yeah, I think it's definitely possible. It's honestly, there's going to be a turn round, though. There's going to be a swing round. Big clutch, oh. reset economy, something along those lines. That could be the change. Or this double, double up setup. Up. <laughs> How many times have we just seen double op turn the tide of a game on, on CT side Mirage? It's, it's often, isn't it? Um, almost every single time it happens. Uh, it's very rare that at this level of play you see the double op come out and it not perform. It's so difficult uh, to deal with it when you aren't using your utility proactively to force the oppers off those angles. And I mean, uh, with Butler University focusing control towards mid, this could be exactly what they didn't want. Oh, uh, wow. I would say very lucky to get away alive there. Yeah, incredibly so. Going to be sticking around for a little bit longer as well. Vacating position on Mavania. Not ready for anybody to jump up in towards the window either. Oh. In that situation towards mid too, I, I, I'm busy wondering, you know, Ninja's there taking that fight with the con player, but where's the trade, you know? That would have been an opening for the Butler University side. Instead, now they have to work with this all this equal fight, at least in terms of the players alive, but over towards B, there's been a push towards the apartments, and so Wayne State, they'll have an idea of what's coming. Yeah, Amavania really needed to be on a bit more of a swivel there. Burnout will collect another frag. There's still an op here, though. Ishiguro could deny the plant, but isn't going to swing. Instead, waits a moment, and that's a moment too long. Avernova, the last alive. I just want to consider the save, too. This loss would be brutal for not only him, but Ashley also on low money. So could use the rifle, especially in the next round, but... It's not meant to be the op of burn. It will take him out. And the double op setup, it, it, it doesn't find anything. I'm not going to lie. That's kind of your fault. Kind of your fault, Birdie. What did I do? You you said there's never a time that this doesn't have impact. Um. Well, here, let me spin that then. There was impact. They, they, they got a kill. A kill. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, okay. Whatever you say, dude. Birdie Box throwing the round for Wayne State University and now Butler. Giving it their best shot to find a two-round advantage, one that's been rare. TMF should have this. It will be fairly easy. I'm he has a, a FAMAS, had enough money to buy that, and no longer has his life. Unfortunate, it's, it's long range on the, uh, yeah, on the, on the spray, just a lot better for Viking. I'm noticing the positioning it is really what's determining a lot of these fights. We're seeing 1v1s come through a lot, but we're not necessarily seeing the, the reactions or the, the positioning for players to trade off the back of them. Like right there, I mean, you got this player in ladder, but Phantom just nowhere to be found in the trade. Instead, we've got this setup found Viking extending his kill death ratio 28 to 14. We're only 23 rounds in this game. Yeah, that's that's an incredible, incredible showing. 28 kills. He's doubled anyone else on his team. It was a moment there where Ninja... Wait. Ninja was 12 and something, and Viking was 14 and something at one point. Mm -hmm. Now Viking is 28 kills, and Ninja's 14. That just goes to show the, <laughs> the pace.
Yeah, I mean, it, it also means that the, the other players on the side of Butler University, they've been starting to pick up the pace. You know, Ninja has had the opportunity to kind of sit back because the rest of the players have been uh, doing work elsewhere. But um, I have to detract for a moment because the CT side is two P90s, and that just that just has to be talked about. I, yeah, I saw that. I was going to sort of ignore it at first, but you're right. It does bear bear mentioning. Uh, two P90s? They're no. both on the B-ball site. <laughs> That's going to be an interesting retake if this doesn't work. Here's a standard execute. Where he smokes. They hit the stairs. All he missed. Not going to matter. Viking doubles up once again. He's up to 30. And uh, these P90s, uh, they're going to hurt in this retake situation. That's um, that's an understatement. Yeah. I mean, Save the Ping really needs to find something here. Ashi. Actually, the, the HPs, never mind. This this could work. Oh, but, but the problem is overcoming Phantom. Oh, but... Phantom giving the position away, so now they know. Ping goes down, but P90, two of them still alive, but only for a moment. TMF finds two quick succession. And Viking was on the rotate. I think that would have been a victory nonetheless. Butler poised to win this game as they have now 13. And with Wayne State, their economy dwindling, forced on to a save. 14 seems all but guaranteed. All right, is this is this the round we see the the Deagle Ace on the B bomb site? Oh, look at the information. Maybe. Things push towards ramp. They know exactly. Butler University are trying to push aggressively. That's the bomb. It's gone. Ichigori has got that first kill and potential for more, but time for the Wayne State side to react. They won't be able to though because players are dropping like flies. It's the B bomb site to go along with it. Save the ping. He pushed that A ramp just a few moments ago, and he's. Found himself retaking the B bomb site alone. I mean, very swift to get into the spot. Unfortunately, mall lead. But uh, catch some fire as well from the car position momentarily, I would, ima I would imagine. Trying to spawn things out. Here's Ninja. Hello and goodbye. 14. Not only a guarantee, but a reality with a 30 bomb on the back of Viking. Butler University picking up a map win seems near inevitable. It's Wayne State. They're going to have to make the statement this round, Birdie. Got to say no. Uh, I think it's the longest streak of rounds we've had for this entire game. Uh, and, and that's where, is. Th that's kind of with the collapse of the CT side economy. I mean, coming into this, it's it's definitely their, their last chance to try to pull this together, at least with the full gun round. And I think it's going to have to revolve around this AWP. It's currently pushed up towards... It's not pushed up. It's positioned over towards ticket. It's, it, this is not really where you want to see it. Um, Butler have had like really extensive executes when they hit the safe bomb site, and once that CT smoke lands, I can't imagine that op is going to be able to be very effective. Well, I mean, there's always chances to to jump over that. Maybe you go, you move forward, you take a shot, you fall back through it. All of those things possible, but yeah, that certainly make life miserable. But for now, it's just about matter of taking space at mid, and that position's actually been given away. Shigoru. Jumping up on the ticket. Shows himself. An HE grenade doing a little chip damage as well. It's going to be Wayne State taking the first opportunity and the second to the lurk out towards Palace. Her TMF is denied. And an additional frag found Phantom gone. Courtesy of Ashy. Can we talk for a moment how comfortable Ping has been to just walk into a random region of the map and find impact? Just look for information, find kills. It's, it's absolutely crazy. He's found a kill, and well, he's got information as well. It's pushed the rest of his teammates toward mid, where they managed to close out the round. It's a good one for Wayne State. All five players push forward. Not only that, but the second op recovered. The double op wasn't super effective last time. Uh, Maybe it will be this time. Armavania has a spawn for mid. Listen, Vincent, this is where you turn the page. You forget about the mistakes of the previous um, institution, the previous double op set up and uh you look to install the new one all right i i full faith that it's gonna have impact as it does here in the opening stages that might scare butler away from looking for information towards middle but mistiming towards the palace means the kill is traded back and uh, save the ping continues to do so again yeah i mean save the ping probably needed to tell ashy that he's pushed that like four rounds in a row though <laughs> yeah i mean i'm just saying hey by the way before you do that i've done that yeah, like every round, and gotten the kill like every round, so probably don't go for that again. But, jokes aside, this is a very weird spot, actually, for, for the CTs to be in. 
another mid window smoke, but that's not going to matter at all because of how far pushed up the AWP is Ishikuru in that position. Uh, and Mavania's just worried about this window play, but and, and that's going to leave Evernova alone towards this B bomb side. The rotations, they're going to be so far away and no one in position to help him out. He's going to have to stand tall. It swings first, and it's not going to work out. Phantom to find that first kill, and now in good post plant positions already. It's 3v3. It, it looks to benefit this T side greatly. Yeah, this is where the double op really struggles on the retake. Nade does a little bit more damage. Trying to grab something other than that AWP, and it's good. Ishiguru with a nice shot. Position given away of the player over towards bench, but what's pinged down it's still... A two-on-two, two, and Ishikuru continuing to find success. They gotta move. The kit in hand. The op missed is its mark, and TMF might have this round based on time alone. Luminova needs it right now. Five ticked, and it's, it's all gone. gone. <laughs> Holding my breath, man. That's absolutely crazy. But we get to this point, finally. It feels like it's been... In just a few short moments, we've just seen back and forth affairs, but honestly, they haven't been long rounds. We haven't seen the time get ticked down. It's just been opening defaults into an execute if we can and close out the round from there. But Wayne State now, they've got to make up these four rounds to prevent us from going to this map too. I don't know why, yeah? but the HUD just isn't, isn't giving us the P90. Actually has a P90, I'm pretty sure. Is she? Okay. Big miss shot. Burnout gonna win that duel. Ooh. Phantom as well. Goodbye, Abernova. And this double lob has been tragic, to be honest. And it's been all based off of that positioning I was talking about before. They're just not in good positions to succeed. It's 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 tragically the case. But I mean, when you stand in front of a tidal wave, can you be surprised when you get hit? Fair enough. We've seen a lot of good stuff. From Wayne State, but they're needing a 2v4 victory to continue this endeavor. Ashi able to recover the AWP apparently, as uh, gonna pick up that opening frag to turn things into a three on two. Ninja will put the bomb down. He's got a smoke too. He could isolate the single towards Cal if he wants to, but the way he used that smoke could determine the outcome of this round. He doesn't end up doing so, and now there's open sight lines for this retake to come through. Wayne State heavily motivated to go for this. Not really a reason to ignore it. A grenade, well positioned, but not enough HP to secure the frag. Wayne State needs to hunt for this kill, and they do. Viking, though, swinging through. It's the double to push us into map 2. 16 and 11. Butler University went out on the map pick. Not only that, but 33 frags for Viking. That is incredible. You have to love what that really offers for a potential uh, of a second map. Wayne State and... They uh they pick out Mirage and they get they get bumped off on their own map pick. That is that is really approaching a huge different difference from the expectations that we were looking for, and I love it. I, I mean, you know, it's kind of a cliche at this point, Birdie. Like, but whenever whenever we get get those expectations that are different from the reality of the situation, I'm so excited because that means we have another fantastic team here on the Varsity Premier side of Maze. Not only that, but it means that. We could potentially see the series going a completely different way than we expected. I mean, Wayne State, I, I think I think they're probably a little bit shocked right now. I mean, they have all the same information we did coming into this. They probably saw the roster and went, what is this? This is nothing. Uh, and now heading into Nuke, it's the map pick, sure, but uh, there's pressure on the line. They have something to lose here. They could be heading home in just a little over an hour. It's not their map pick, Bird. It, Nuke is Butler's pick. Oh, the, I'm seeing something different then. I, I mean, yeah. I know, but Butler, Butler picking Nuke. So, the fact that the fact that they won on Mirage, Wayne State picking that map, like, that's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, okay. I do see this This now. man All is right. so confused. We're going to go to yeah, a short no. break while Birdie <laughs> Box gets unconfused and unexplained basic map picking and banning. We'll get back to you in just a moment. Oh, Wayne State running in to the big butler on Mirage. And with that, we move forward. It's Nuke coming up next. Birdie Box joined by Vincent. And uh, you know what? I feel like Butler deserves a lot of credit. They they came out and they came out swinging in a way that you and I just didn't expect. Yeah, I mean, I didn't just expect because I, I read the map picks wrong, but um, <laughs> it's fine. Listen, we move on, as will both these rosters, into Nuke. And it's an exciting map because it's 
it's not necessarily one where aim takes um precedent you know you, you don't you don't have to be the better team to win on a map like nuke if you use your utility correctly if you know you know when do we lobby crunch when do we take outside when do our lurks activate uh, these are the things that can be more important in a map like nuke and um, more uh, more importantly i would argue on the ct side how are your rotations you know what i mean if you if there's a vent drop that comes through and you've got no one on your ct side to handle that you know you could lose the round just because of that yeah, I, I think that, you know, our our expectations for Butler have shot up, but I want to yes. maybe maybe dampen them a, a little bit and because I want to bring back a point I made in the pre-show. Um, and that is, if you pick Nuke, the problem with picking Nuke is that you have to start on the T side. And the T side is difficult on Nuke. So I think that that will potentially put a bit of a damper on the on the Butler mojo here that they might be carrying over from Mirage into Nuke. Uh, as Wayne State get that better CT sided start. Of course, you know, if Butler just kind of run out to a roaring lead on the T side, then I mean, that, that changes things. And also, they probably win the map and the series. Yeah, I. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm looking at this. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at everything. I feel like be, my expectations, they've just completely disappeared at this point. I'm, I'm here to watch the better team just win. I, I don't I don't know exactly how to analyze which one that's going to be coming into this. I, I think the Pistron might set some pace. I feel like nukes, Pistrons don't. They aren't as random as other maps might be because usually there's a, there's a bit of tactics, there's a bit of pizzazz when it comes to Pistrons on nuke. And so, you know, that might be the first convincing point for me, if not the first gun round. I will really tell the story. I'm a big pizzazz guy, like, uh, like a yeah. little bit of pizzazz here and there. So, I, and I tend to agree. It would be story-wise a big talking point. Um, of course, I, I also think that you have to, to keep in mind CT side's just like really strong. So oftentimes you just get the freebie on the pistol if they run out A and miss a flash. It's like, oh, there's three players dead already because they ran through hut and the the flash missed. So in that way, you love that. Yeah, like in that <laughs> way it is still a little bit random, but. Uh, all things considered. It, my, my favorite thing about T-Side Nuke is when you throw outside smokes and then just uh, you're, you're entering and then one of them is just missed and there's, you know, three players holding you or, you know, something along those lines or just there's a tiny gap and someone with a an MP9 decides to ruin your day. It's it, it's great. It, you really do have to rely on your teammates in that way a lot uh, on your T-Side. That's a, that's a good point. Know. We uh we have actually got started already. And uh, what? Why is Butler on the CT side? Oh, no, 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 no. This is... This is Wayne State on the CT side. I, I'm crazy. <laughs> we just have the overlay wrong. Okay. So... I, yeah. We've we've missed a decent amount here. We, so, about that first pistol on it said, listen, um, they decided we didn't need that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, after the showing from Butler University, Wayne State was like, listen, give us these four. G yeah. Give us these four. Let's start off this map on on good terms, and we can take it from there. Indeed, we uh, we are going to take it from there. A little bit of applause to allow us time to get started. Is uh, apparently uh, we didn't get the memo that it was time to begin. So we'll uh, we'll see how things go. Butler, on the other hand, not the not the strongest of starts by the looks of it. We have an op out this round. I love to see that on the T side. It's always very fun. It depends, where, it depends where you take it, though. I mean, it, it can be very useless as well. It's it, Nuke's one of those maps where, like, you, ha you, ha you kind of have to go for the openings. They don't really present themselves to you uh, very much. Oh. Well, Burnett <laughs> going to find an opening. That's Ishigori down in the early stages of the round. Outside smokes? I say that with a question mark behind it because it's... There's, there's not, like, all the smokes. They're kind of weird. But, yeah, they're there. Burnett. Going to find another frag, but it's two the other way as Viking finds another one. These two players, though, Mavani is rotated back through, but it's up through the vent to reveal himself. Viking will punish that rotation. And this remaining AK in hand, I mean, he's been unnoticed as far as I can tell, but there's difficult fights to win, and more likely than not, it's going to be one more than one at a time. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I'm a Vanya nearing a, uh, a connection, but you know, it's, it's kind of fitting that you mentioned that T side op. Bernu had a big round, 3K, getting the opening pick, the follow up, 
Viking gets a couple there and then the closer as well. So Butler University on the board as we first look into this round. So good to see. It's a uh, it's a purchase for the CTs. Uh, they're, they're a little late to get out of spawn, in all honesty. Uh, slightly, but they'll make it work. No rush coming out from either side, but it's event drop. Actually, I mentioned this while we were transitioning into the game. Once you have that drop come through, how do you react to the rotations? We do have counter terrorists already down there, but I don't think either team has really realized what's going on. Uh, yeah, I don't think so either. I'm a Vanya. Going to be honestly fortunate to even pick up one there. Burn it will fall, but Viking there to trade. And I like this. I like this adjustment. Very quick did Wayne State go for the re-aggression. They drop down secret. They go down the vent and they pull a push towards the uh, the lobby. But it's going to be TMF. The flying ping. Opening of the door. Ashy tosses a Molotov into the corner. But Ninja isn't going to be going down to that. Ishikori looking for that refrag, but TMF still doing some good work. And it's just, it, I mean, it's all over the place, it felt like, but Butler, another round is there. There we go. Second round, and the T side can start to find some momentum. And this, Vincent, is what I was describing before. You win two rounds in your T side, you break the CT side, and all of a sudden, you're up nine rounds in your T side. You know, that's, that's all I'm saying, Vincent. Hey, right, fair enough. We just, uh, we get accelerated into this map. That's, that's, that was what happened. I'm okay with it. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> okay. Goodbye, Birdie. You take those. You, you certainly do. And, uh, well, you take those so much so that you look for more of those. Reaggression into hut, I think. Yeah, this is, oh boy, this is tragedy. Flank from outside, too. It's a trap for Ninja to fall back into, but he managed just to hold on with the Galil two frags for him, but how much longer can he go for as he finds two more drops to AWP in the process against Avernovos? Communicating, hold on, guys, I'm coming. Don't leave me out of the games, but they've already I mean, left. It, they've it, gone home. Listen, it shouldn't have been just... <laughs> they, all four players shouldn't have dropped. They had an off. They had deagles. They had chances find this victory. Avernova might find another here. Oh, decides to go the wrong direction, though. Ninja. I would be surprised to see them find the ace here. But You know, uh, I think in the game of Counter-Strike, anything is possible. Um, not anymore. Never mind. That, that run, that's that. Oh, oh. What is happening? <laughs> uh, something. A commitment? Why? Why commit? I'm, Phantom didn't even have his gun out. He was so surprised. Yeah, I'm, I'm slightly <laughs> confused. I guess I respect the attempt. They had the money to continue going for this, but um, I think it's a weapon that's probably worth saving, or at least something that was worth... Um, I agree. Believe getting always worth a save. Or something. Yeah. yeah, same here. Wayne State, though. Regardless of the decisions uh, of Avernova that, that last round, the big giveaway was Ninja allowed to just spray down with the Galil four members of Butler, or rather of Wayne. Oh, and Bernu, he's done it again. Second time since we've been looking at it. And Bernu with the opening pick, but save the ping. He's here. He's ready. How many does he get? Nobody's he checking. He's got one, a second, a third to be had. It saved the ping for three. Is he's going to get another? No, burnout. will take his life, but Viking alone, one on three. Just the information that he gained there. He didn't have to get a single kill to win the round for his team. Absolutely amazing, but Viking, it's not a player you can ignore. Finds one of the 1v3 and disappears back into the lobby. All of a sudden, it's a searching process for the CT side as well. A minute left for Viking to toy with and plenty to toy for. Split up, one player towards Secret, trying to catch off that rotation below towards B, and all of a sudden, this A1S of Ashi. Oh, it's made so many angles and now looking at the wrong one. Viking, an opportunity for a frag, but no deal means this 1v2 just got a lot more difficult. Still time, though. 35 seconds. And now we're collect the bomb and then once again dip back into the shadows. Could go down ramp entirely for free and won't be hurt at all. So... A plant almost certainly oh. viable, unless he gets caught here. Could be, and yeah, Achi. 
Nice what timing on that road tape. Yeah, yeah. What a read, too. I'm, I'm not sure if Ashley was expecting that he would have already gone down vent or that the timing would have already been missed to down ramp. But the fact that that works out, I mean, hey, you, you take every single uh, every single one of those situations, I guess, Wayne State. Um, they hold on with two guns there towards the end, but it's not going to dissuade Butler from reinvesting back into this. So not really a full buy, though. It, it's strange. TMF is five grand, but his teammate's on a Galil. I'm somewhat confused, but it's going to be pinged open up with the AWP. I mean, I guess if the op just rings out and rings true, that's not a big deal for me or for you, but we got to move forward. Butler. UMP as well for uh, Avernova. Oh, and Viking. There's that it's opening the, pick. It's the audio work cue. Too. Yeah, Phantom. Gonna hear the audio cue. Ashy. Somehow gonna connect the shot and then get away as well. So good work from Wayne State. Able to bring things back. Avernova, though. Can't quite find the timing. And once again, it's tied three on three. And Phantom gonna turn that on its head. Ping. Still outside. A chance for another. Timing here is absolutely everything. You've got Ash in this back lines as well towards Secret. Just barely could catch Phantom off guard. Oh, <laughs> on all fronts. Absolute disaster. But Viking also on the flank. There's like seven dimensional chests going on here between these rotations. But the bomb will eventually need to be picked up. First though, I imagine a frag to come through from Viking. And Ashley thrust into the clutch once again, 1v2, and we'll have to be loud about this. Yeah, I mean, Ashley's rotation, pretty reasonable to be honest, but now has yet no utility left. Viking very low, has three kills already. And Phantom as well, who's been incredibly clutch for Butler. Phantom going to walk into Ashley's crosshair, and Ashley will take it quickly, easily, though I don't know that you expect... Viking to be up in heaven still. Hard always, to call. It's always be though. Ooh, just needs to get that first shot. But Viking finds the timing to swing right back through. So T side to recover in that situation outside. Definitely diffusing what was an incredibly awkward situation. And once again, brutalizing the economy of Wayne State. Yeah, what a way to put that as well. I mean, it, it's these are the worst situations for the CT buy. 1900 on one player, 5k on another. That's how that works. Like, how do you like how do you make an investment decision? You're just not anywhere close to each other. I'm gonna see outside smokes. It's the it's been these close outside smokes on the left side where you only need two of them pretty much the whole time, and then you throw the garage smoke as well. So consistently applying that same pressure, Boon Burnout. I struggle with that name all day, and I, I apologize. Gonna get the opening though. Ooh, and there's a head popped up, but popping back down, back into the site. Can't get away though. Not from Burnout. Surprised that Wayne State are continuing to hold on, but finally they end up dropping. And this is scout has it even fired a single shot? I'm not quite sure, but no, not a single point of health gone either. Yeah, there's now the first connection, and uh, he's gone. Only connection as well. So, Vincent, I don't, what, what were you telling me about a CT side of Nuke? Listen, the, the stats don't lie, Bird. I don't know what to tell you. All it right, is but... a CT sided map. <laughs> Listen, sometimes they do lie. All right. No, they don't. This just isn't. <laughs> there can be many outliers. No, 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 no. no. Listen, Vincent, <laughs> you're wrong. Five, five rounds for Butler. I'd al already call this pretty good. I would agree. To, to be honest, like anything more, you're feeling a lot better about yourself on the C, on the T side, or on the C, when you get to the CT side rather. Ninja, cool. there's that opening, but there's no way they let him do this again. Bing, he's only got the one. Thank God. Oh, punish frag towards garage though. It means there's an open door outside. They can go wherever they want, and I think they recognize it. They could wrap towards heaven. Maybe even back down towards B through ramp if they so desire. And the CT side split one down towards B and one hovering around the vent currently. We'll end up going back down as well, I think. So as they regroup, it's both sides to miss each other. And a minute left for them to recollect. Yeah, this is a bit of crazy timing at this point. And as you mentioned, it looks like 
Back down B. That's going to be the call. Team F spots him out. Now that should pick up the pace for Butler. Team F unsure if he wants to play up in heaven or not. Ooh, backwards A. What a ridiculous rotate that is. They might have been outplaying themselves here. Viking going to go down. Both these players very low. 40 HP, 50 less than that between the two. But that's information on both players. They knew they fought someone outside, and there's one towards the lobby. And so now trying to split the defense. They got the bomb. The hands of Phantom. They'll send it back down towards B, and they've they got a player towards Heaven, I believe. But I, I'm not sure what's going on here because that flash was definitely over towards ramp. And so hiding towards this decon door. This bomb plant, it's not going to go unnoticed. It's definitely not going to go unpunished. Five seconds left to end the round, and TMF's not going to have anything to contribute left. It's Wayne State to pull themselves back into the lead and maybe an opportunity to recover this spiraling economy. Yeah, absolutely. And it's given over by Butler. What a fumble from them. They they forgot their basics, their Counter-Strike basics. Need to go watch the War L video. Stick together yeah. in a three-on-two. You have the advantage. Just trade it out. What Butler needed to do, and they just they got a little too cute with it, I think. Indeed, and standard utility up towards this A site, smoke to deny visibility, but neither side will really make any actual attempts to get out. As I say that, though, TMF, he's, he's gone out, there's the rest of his team's no followed here. through. There's also no utility to back it up. Somehow they've made it work. It's the empty bomb site for the T side, and to save the ping, what? tries to find information, what? tries to maneuver around. It's what was now he doing? all been uncovered. I don't understand either. He just tried to solo flash himself out onto the A site. Ninja, no way, no <laughs> way he gets another. Ninja, a Dude. ridiculous turn of events as I'm Lavinia. Gonna get one more. It's a two on four, but no, TMF denying further. I'm Lavinia. Nice shot onto TMF, but burn it. We'll shut it down. And that was a whole bunch of what the hell happened. I feel like I said this in the first map, but... Uh, th every round just feels like, what? how is this happening? <laughs> what is going on? Uh, I feel like I'm watching... I, I don't know how to describe it, but... I, I don't know, the, the team, these two teams are complementing each other so perfectly, where it's like, their playstyles are so, like abstract enough to where... Um, oh, oh, that opening duel's been won by Bernu before, not this time though. The scout will prevail, and a rifle recovered towards Lobby as well. Butler University forced to push outside some more, proving my point further. <laughs> no, just that interaction right there is so Like, I could hear the comms right there from uh, Royal State. Like, uh, Save the Ping got that kill. Ishiguru steals it away, has like one HP. And it was oh. just like, give me my gun. Give me my gun. And Save the Ping gonna convert that gun into a further kill. 2v4, but there's no armor on the majority of these players in Ishiguru. Oh, he snuck out. He could be finding oh, one. No. no, he's going to miss out. How is Viking not aware? Viking with a turn. And he's got another two. I'm Avania, the last alive. And inside the vent to find the low HP Viking. But no, Viking will clean it up. And I mean, that was an eco round. And it got a lot closer than it probably should have been. But Butler taking back the lead at seven. All right, it's time. This is the round. Or I guess you could argue the next one. This is the round that shows the stats are wrong, Vincent. T-sided nuke is where it's at. <laughs> you are aware that regardless of the outcome of this round, that uh, the stats are averages, right? Um, uh, I disagree and I refuse to elaborate. Uh, well, that's fun. All right. Wayne State. Oh, a little bit of a missed flashbang right there that little gap in the smoke could really be deadly to butler the not single flashbang too and ash could probably swing up in front of it oh, legs spotted no kill just yet air vernova trying to get around it but phantom will punish how has these frags gone the way of the t side somehow they get away unscathed and i am confused <sighs> and uh, i just don't know what's happened I'm Avania is going to find the frag onto Ninja. It's going to keep things at least, at least relatively even now. Oh. They move up towards. Oh no! Burn, burn, burn. <laughs> Awkward situation, but uh, 
Ichiguri stuck on the reload isn't going to be able to hold on to his life. Three players are standing on the T side as they shift the bomb in towards A. The rotation's aware and this time around. Molotov off and shot out of the round by Viking. Ashley is going to be put into a difficult attempt at a clutch. Difficult indeed, but not unwinnable. The, the kid in, in hand. Flashbang as well. Didn't have any clue where that was coming from, and Phantom will take advantage of the mo of the small amount of time that it takes to reset. Eight rounds. Butler win their, winning on their T side. That is a great look for them on their map pick. A very standard nuke. <laughs> Why do you have to be this way? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's you, always a good time. You just enjoy me being wrong, even though I'm not. <laughs> yeah, you're right, but you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, th this is how it is. I don't know why I choose to, to come here and cast with you. I don't get it. Because you're having a good time, and so is Phantom. <laughs> Phantom really is having a good time. Two frags. Phantom, double kills for Phantom have been, like, really a consistent factor, haven't they? Like, just consistently picking up two whenever yeah, it's needed. Agree. The fact that we're seeing the scout, Max, have a dual, like, Deagle is... I, I don't know, there's something so iconic about this trio of weapons, I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're Nico? Yeah, any of these three will do. That's true. <laughs> Especially on Nuke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, literally all, any of the... Oh, it recovered AK. That's, that'll... I mean, unless your name is Nico. Mm, do we want to talk about that? I just did. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. That's nice. awareness from the T yeah. side. Great shot that was as well. Two bullets, and that's all. Deliberate, quick, yeah. clean. That's a clear that you really want to be looking forward to in situations like this. You don't want to get complacent when you have these man advantages. Right now, Butler definitely aren't. Well, and we saw them get complacent with a man advantage earlier, and I think that's part of the reason that we're seeing them be so, so specific, so uh, dominant with regard to taking these duels. It's that they are making sure that that doesn't happen again. Upgrade, if you could call it that, to the MP5. Rabernova. Yeah. Best gun of the game? Nope, sorry, that is... Uh, uh, that was the auto shotty. It was the best gun yeah. of the game. Oh, hi. This, this core player just outrages. <laughs> I'm just looking at it, I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah, okay, Viking 18 kills, Phantom 12 kills, alright. It's just like, the, the more I read, it's like, the more insane it becomes. I mean, no one's really underperforming like too crazy on either side it's just we st we have those few star players that are just absolutely taking control of the game yeah i mean burnout i think has had some really critical moments with the opening picks on the awp as well mm -hmm. wayne state as a whole they 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 aren't underperforming in my book they've been having some big big moments of their own but save the pings the only guy that really has stepped up big in one of those rounds to give them a victory TMF uncleared, but eventually traded. Leaves them the man disadvantage as players trying to be plucked out as they exit towards ramp and trying to get at the situation here. Butler University looking to try to get kills before the bomb goes down, but unfortunately for them, Wayne State, they got guns of their own and they've got themselves that second pistol. Yeah, they do. Two pistols in this map as well for Wayne State. The fact that they won the first half pistol and they only got six rounds is a little bit disappointing, to be honest. Um, just kind of shows the power of Butler's CT side. We'll have to see what their CT side has to offer as it's a, uh, MP9 across the board type of round. With a Swag 7 as well. This gun's seen so much action in this game. It's been bought many times. I, 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 let me rephrase. It's been bought many times, hasn't seen much action. <laughs> I have seen so many Mag 7s the last, like, week, to be honest. There was it's like the 15 mag sevens in the, in the land of an eye castle. Well, that's not a good situation to be finding yourself in an, with an MP9. Uh, not the range that is you want to be fighting with. But this is a good bait setup straight to the crossers. That max seven, unfortunately, for Viking. The AK comes out on top, and SG, I didn't even pay attention to this. This isn't a traditional weapon for 2023 either. No, you rarely see it. Ninja going to go down, though. Burn it. Whoa, okay. <laughs> no scope headshot. Goodbye, Burdut. Phantom picking up another and another. Three frags now for the MP9. 
but a little greedy on the AK buy. We'll be seeing an eighth round for Wayne State. Oh, man. And this UT side economy continues to... Uh, uh, what's what's the phrase? You don't, don't kick a dead horse? Is that, is that the phrase? Actually, I don't yeah. know what phrase you're talking about, but that's not a thing. No, be, don't beat a dead horse. That's what it is. Yeah. Sure. Uh, or if yeah. I say it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But but they are broke. Butler University are completely broke. They've got yeah, nothing. Okay, fair enough. They are they are indeed the very poor. Uh, but they can still get kills. E two fifty. A little bit of uh, deagle spam action as well. Ninja. And somehow this is equal and more damage being done as well. Uh, how is Ninja gone there? <laughs> okay, I mean a little bit of a a twist into things. Need to settle back down to normal. Viking left alone. 1v3. We'll be setting things up, and unfortunately, he's moved out of the reasonable area that would have been more effective at finding exits, instead, moving away from ramp and out of that. So, this should be a tight game. The end of this. You Viking should be should. able to collect the rifle, though. It might just motivate him enough to go for this. Uh, I say that. He's already moving away. Um, if, if he would have known that these two players are on low HP, uh, a potential to buy into this next round, I mean, maybe you go for it just to keep this T-side economy at bay, you know? It, it, it might make sense. I think it would be justifiable. I don't think you could blame Viking for doing it, especially, I mean, with how he's been performing. Definitely uh, something to go for. I mean, probably not, like, the statistical right play, but I, I would agree. You certainly could make the argument, and I think it'd be a valid one. We'll see if they go hunting. Wayne State certainly looking around. The fact that he's running around with his knife out is terrifying me. Oh, there's the SG. <laughs> I'll be up in that way. You had very important work to do, Birdie. Mm hmm. The SG must survive. This is true. Here's the buy, Butler. We've got everything that they need. Took them four rounds to get in into the the game last half. Maybe that's the case here, as we are now three rounds in. Fourth coming up here. So WP could be important because Wayne State don't have something to correspond with it. And so as it positions itself outside, Wayne State might find it difficult to try to contest. And so ramp control could be important. Phantom Max getting close outside will punish that first frag. Over the top of Marshmallow, this SG is a really difficult gun to fight this with. I, I wouldn't recommend this to anybody at home, but somehow he makes do, manages to escape in the process as well. Back to the 4v4. Yeah, a good little late trade. Phantom sticking around a little further. Uh, kind of went for the reload, gave the audio cue away. But, oh, that was a bit ambitious. Ashy just kind of walking straight in. Butler, TMF's crosshair. And TMF able to fall back and... Reset just a little bit. They're going to be pressured now. Needs to call for some some rotations, some support. Bernie, going to be some of that support that he brings. Approaching double door. Talk about high pressure situations. Is paying glimpse of that first frag. Burnout ready to swing back and <laughs> setting himself up for this situation, but trying to punish the plant. Not ready for the angle that Ping takes for himself. Viking will be the one to. Close out the round, recover the AWP as well. It's Butler to recover for their first round of the half. Yeah, and they uh, recovered that lead as well. that They had pulling into the half. 10-9, to 9, the first to go to the double digits. It's still been a relatively close affair. But now, here, this, this round almost more crucial than the last. And I'll mm -hmm. tell you why. The economy situation, you need to continue to have success. And in fairness, it's a little bit easier when T side's only working with two rifles, and three pistols. Yeah, another opening by Burnwood as well. Off the back of the state of EP, you can see, look at Phantom hunting for that frag. A little bit too scared of Marshmallow to commit for the swing. And Joseph will follow up. And there's still two AKs on the board for the T side, but how do they work their way into a bomb site? I guess Ping is a good opening to try to do that with. Jeez. They can't find him either. Good call to pull this back. Don't want to overcommit. <gasps> Mavania. Oh, big opening. That's Ninja got down and out off of the A site. A rotation towards ramp as well for Wayne State. Three players remain. 
And they have the B site pretty much open. Should hear him. I don't know who's in the back of the A bomb site there, but he definitely knows what's going on down towards this B site. And so while the rotations won't be immediate, they will come through around the time this bomb will look to be planted. Viking with a broken door to look for and oh, spray, not connecting for any bullets. Information on where the bomb's going to be planted, picking up a second kill on the flank, coming through towards ramp. Viking in for a second, and it's all down to Ichigori for the 1v2 bomb. Not immediately in a tradable position. He would have to extend a little bit further, and he has straight into the crosshair of Phantom. It's a good follow-up for Butler University. And while the bomb plant is concerning, it will mean a reinvestment from Wayne State. It is another round win. Yeah, two players survive, so not not the greatest when it comes to building economy. But at the very least, you do get a little bit. Ninja had a, has AK here at the beginning. Burnout has enough money to buy back. At least a rifle won't really have the op, though. So, good news for Butler, but just as good, if not better, for Wayne State with the bomb plant. Especially now as they're working two-round loss bonus. It's going to be outside smokes. All, all smokes five players outside, well. too. Every single player on this T side is looking outside, and Phantom once again looking to punish. He's been revealed, but he continues to find impact in for a double. But his bullets, the AK betrays him. His trades come through. It's a 2v3, 20 seconds into the round. Well, the bomb is dropped, it should be recoverable, and it's all onto Wayne State to try to find the remainder of these openings. Oh, and they've done it. Saved the ping. Picking up that shot. Wide open is Burnout, but he's got the one for one. It's going to be up to TMF. Oh, the bomb. It's in an open position. Oh. Damage done. Significant as such, and he's dropped down as well. Ping. On the other side of this wall. Peeks out and finds the frag. Wayne State. With a victory and the 3k for save the ping. What a brilliant read, too. You know exactly what's going through Pink's mind. I, I got this bomb. I know I'm being chased here. I was running straight towards that A site. That's what most people would do. I'll hang on a minute. I'll swing back through. I'll go for that 1v1, and he does it. It's exactly how you win that clutch situation. At least one of the ways you could have done it. Wayne State, it's, it's a round they'll enjoy having. It's not going to take away everything Butler University had, but it'll push them towards the brink of it. Control over towards ramp. UMP for the entry. Oh. <laughs> Slightly struggling. All right. TMF. Nice shots. With that FAMAS. And, uh, you know, the UMP doing great work. Same exact work that it normally does. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's nothing. It's a trash gun. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Burnout's up here now as well. Oh. That's just ridiculous. Ishiguri at least connecting. But he needs one more. Actually needs two. He's low HP. Phantom shut it down. So, TMF. Nice work. Getting that double kill uh, initially. Forcing Wayne State through that smoke. And they continue to push this two-round lead. And now Wayne State's economy I would ex it's really busted. I would expect a pause here, to be honest. Uh, at least from teams who... We've seen zero pauses, pauses this entire yeah, I was series. Say, from teams who normally take like most of their pauses, that that's a situation where you'd expect to pause because going through a gun round like this, or at least forcing back into a round like this, this isn't something that warrants discussion. You don't go into these rounds with an idea of what you want to do because if you lose out, you end up with nothing left. And so, well, they will end up being able to drop down towards these vents. It's not going to be that the cost of information is the bomb heads out towards B. A little bit of a Awkward tap for Burnout, but he will find the frags and triple up as well to end the round. <laughs> that force buy, I'm not sure I could be the one to justify it. I'm not the one in the server, but that didn't seem like it was worth the cost. Yeah, I, I would have appreciated if Wayne State really put a lot of pressure on getting the bomb planted there. Then I can make the argument, okay? Like, the plan was get the bomb down. But instead, now we're in a weird spot where the money's all over the place and you're, you're just kind of, you're, you're going for a hero rifle. Avranova has a gun. Nobody else has weapons. In fact, it's Glocks mostly. It's just a P250 for Amavania. And it's going to be the smoke? Phantom taking that initial pick. Uh, the second smoke's so important, but it's lacking. It's arguably what we could have let Wayne State work their way down towards Secret. And instead, it's just Another funneled. Molly. It's just funneled this T-side into the crosshair of Phantom's. AK continues to fire shots. Still only one kill to be found, but I imagine that'll change in a few moments. Yeah, I mean, finally that AK swinging. It's all gone down to naught. Burnout even taking the USP for the long range engage with... Ooh. Okay.
Okay, nice block. AK recovered as well. But that's just for a moment. 14 for Butler. And, and not only is it 14, but an important kind of note here to have is the rounds that Butler have won, they haven't always been the most dominant. They've been kind of scraping by with, you know, one, two, three players left alive. Keeping four alive there in an Antifa was huge because it, it gives them that one round buffer that can sometimes push you over the yep. line, especially when you're only two rounds away from winning. Precisely. Like, you can afford to lose a round right now if you're Butler. Not that you want to, but also another note, by the way, 10 to 10 is where we were on Mirage before Butler took four rounds to get to 14 in a row. It's the exact mirror of what we saw before. Absolutely insane, but this time around, Butler, they're not going to get the better end of that entry, and as the door opens, Viking, oh, is he getting close? This could be a really dangerous... <laughs> That's scary. Not for just Viking, but is he run out of bullets? Why switch weapons? No, just uh, had a moment. No, I don't know. To this be is, fair, he did get the ding. That's why you unbind your scroll wheel from switching weapons. That will save the ping, though. With a very nice shot. That's going to be ninja down. Swing out. Ooh. Where are those bullets going? Where did they go? I, I am with TMF right now. I don't know what safe the ping is wearing for body armor, but I think I need some of it. You can supply it to every military force in the world. Oh, man. I know, right? <laughs> Give me some of that. Yeah. That's absolutely outrageous. Just, that man was unkillable. Imagine the frustration TMF feels right now. Dude, oh. I would have tossed oh. my mouse across the room. <laughs> Not just the mouse. I think I would toss myself across the room. <laughs> <laughs> just jump out of your seat. Yeah. Just go flying. Yeah. Yeah, I... TMF just got robbed right there. I don't know. Good round for Wayne State. I mean, that was probably Wayne State's round regardless of that mm. engage. But, save the ping. He's a magician, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I mean, definitely I'll, I'll let ping know later. The other ping. But, uh, he's, apparently he's really good at Counter-Strike. I, I never knew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. It's going to be that buff round you talked about. Up out for Burnu. Ooh, and just about got taken out, but we'll edge the victory on that FAMAS. This angle, perfect. Do anything you need. Ishiguro, through his teammate, will find Viking. I'm not, I'm not sure two I, on four. I'm not sure I agree with Viking just pushing through that smoke. That this could have been a good opportunity to just hold on to everything you got. Kind of seal the deal, you know? Just right. let the round simmer a little bit, but instead it's... It hasn't necessarily created chances for the side of Wayne State, but it's... It's made it to where any damage dealt is a lot more important. What is that flash? That flash I, that we saw? I can't answer that question for you. Okay, I was just wondering. Oh, Brunut? Brunut! They could be here. Oh no, Ishigori is going to win this round for Wayne State. Three frags already. An ace potential, but no. We'll select the nothing? Did he get nothing? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he got nothing and it's gonna. No, he got the Glock kill! What do you mean? That's so ridiculous. He should have been dead. He should have been dead. I bet Viking right now is feeling really upset that he pushed through that smoke. <laughs> oh no, this was supposed to be the round, Vincent. This was theirs to win, Butler. They're giving it away for free. And Ishiguru. He's got the ace, the op Glock rifle ace. How many how many guns did he get a kill with there? Three, <laughs> and one through his teammate. Oh yeah, uh, dude. There's no way you don't pause. Okay, the game is paused. I'm like, there's no way you're about to university. You don't pause after a situation like that. But if you're if you're okay, here's actually where dynamics between a team like a collegiate team could be important like this. It, if you're a player on the side of Butler University, you, you look up to a player like Viking, uh, consistent fragger, does his job, you know what I mean? It, yeah. Those players usually aren't very easy to criticize. Uh, and, and this is completely speculative, but I don't imagine it's very easy to, you know, after the round ends, to go to a player like Viking and be like, hey, listen, why'd you do that? You know what I mean? You, you kind of fed the round away a little bit. Yeah, you bit. kind of fed the round away because... Not you kind of hurt confidence when you do that. You know you don't want to prevent a player like Viking from doing that in situations like that. So it kind of comes down to Viking as an individual to know, hey, that one was on me. 
You know, yeah. and, and that could be really difficult to do. I'm curious to see how that might affect these few rounds because Wayne State, they've got a chance here to bring this closer. Seems like you've uh, you've probably felt that situation before. I have. Yeah. Tough being the guy with the ego on your team. Bernie, <laughs> I understand. I mean, we one of these teams does have ego yeah. on their team. <laughs> yeah, supposedly, according to our roster sheet. Don't know who it is, but <laughs> either way, Ooh. there's no way. There's no way they're winning a round like this. Butler have two frags already. The Deagle spam works out. A little bit of a swap and go as Ninja has an AK. Luckily for them, though, Butler's a little bit too far away for the rotation to stop this plan. Oh, I say that, Phantom. How have you done this? How Pardon has he done me? this? Who knows one's watching the vent? I don't know. I don't know how he's gotten away. <laughs> no way! <laughs> what is happening? Burdu has a kill as well. This is unreasonable. Save the ping. He's in a 1v2. He's not. I, this is the. I, I'm blown away. I can't speak. Murdy, please. <laughs> listen, listen. It's clutch situations like this that define you as a player in ping. Somehow he has to make do with all the randomness we've seen tonight. He'll do it loudly. 30 seconds. Murdy's going to take this fight. And this time, it's not going to be the Glock to be the saver of this T side. It is I don't Butler. Get it. <laughs> it is Butler to be I the don't team. get it. I just <laughs> don't understand. Man, what? Uh, I just, <laughs> oh my goodness, Butler essentially toss around, I mean, not on purpose, uh, we're just, we're memeing it up, but maybe, maybe they, it was a gentleman's they, agreement. They essentially <laughs> run it down one round and then they win with pistols in the next. <laughs> this is the weirdest grade of game of Counter-Strike I've ever seen and we're going to see Ishiguru thank an opening pick once more. Bernu there to fight back and that smoke not working out so well for the T. Oh man, I, I'm I'm borderline speechless, but save the ping. It's, it's been so good this game, man. Just continues to deliver frag after frag. And they're impactful too. The round opening kills, the round ending ones at that, and oh, this timing could be huge. Viking finding that first kill. Now information on for a second as well. But they know that's the only player outside, more likely than not, in this push towards ramp. If it comes through, it's going to come all down to TMF. He's been great in this spot. A lot of damage done. Going to come back. Another t opportunity given. But this time, he's got to fall back. Doesn't throw the flash. Instead, just goes to the reload. And will go back into control room. Wants to play this passively. Has a crossfire set up. And Viking there to stomp on them. And that will be it. Butler. 16-12, 16-11, back-to-back map wins. It was uh, an interesting end to the game, I would say, but a victory nonetheless and a fantastic look as we, uh, listen, we got very pleasantly surprised. Butler showing up big time in a game we honestly thought, I mean, on paper, based on what we were told, yeah, this shouldn't have been a very competitive game. This should have been Wayne State, but Butler comes out and they punch up and they punch hard. It's definitely Viking as well. I mean, it has to be said. Just the amount of impact he had throughout the entire series, it's it's outrageous. But Phantom as well has to be a close second. Just the, the amount of performance he was able to deliver, just to be that second man whenever uh, Viking fell early in the round or just couldn't quite um, push it over the line. There was that second player to be able to do it, and that was one of the things we talked about. Is you know, if Viking can show up, show up and get yeah. flags, that's great. But there was the supporting players to also help him out. That, that's a great point. You know, Viking was certainly like the the leading charge in this case. But um, I think that you also have to respect the fact that, you know, nobody individually for Wayne State was stepping up to Vikings prowess. And I think that also, you know, in a game where you have like a star player versus a star player, yeah, then it maybe is a little bit different. But instead, it was just Vikings stepping up and then the rest of Butler were having big moments. Burnout, I felt like with the AWP, had some really critical frags, especially outside. You know, that was something that he consistently delivered on was that outside area. And then, of course, as you mentioned, Phantom as well. Um, but TMF, you know, we talked about, I don't remember if it was on stream or if it was in between uh, the maps, but we were talking about the ramp position and how maybe mm. that was going to be a problem potentially. Well, no, TMF had the, had the lockdown on that ramp spot and it was fantastic to watch. Yeah, especially because the ramp is one of those positions where if, if you're not necessarily um, uh, paying attention, if you let yourself die there a lot of the time, uh, that's that's a place that teams will target a lot. That's exactly right, yeah. 
it's sort of the the shark effect you smell the blood in the water and suddenly the run and ramp three times in a row and you're like yeah. oh, what do i do well tmf didn't have to deal with that but we are gonna go and jump into an interview here in a moment we're gonna get one player from butler to uh, have a conversation with us we will take a short break and then head back in once that's ready don't go anywhere Hey gamers, welcome back, and uh, we've got an interview ready to go. It's going to be a lot of fun, Butler University, uh, and we're going to get to talk to uh, Phantom, who we're going to bring in right this moment. Uh, Phantom, welcome to the stream, and uh, how are you guys feeling after that victory? Well, we're definitely very excited after the victory. It's definitely a little hard fought, but I mean, we stuck, we stuck together. As you can see, we're all very excited over here. Um, you know, we a little bit of a struggle to start in Nuke and kind of a little struggle to start on both maps, to be honest. But once we got the momentum going, we just kept going. Well, I, I, ha I think I, I have to ask this question. So, um, you know, I think both Birdie and I kind of walked in. We do a little bit of looking at the beginning of each uh, sure. of these series, just trying to kind of get an idea. Our, our read of the situation is that Wayne State probably should have been on paper the, the better team. Um, but you guys come out and I love when, when a team like you guys just kind of jump out and, and you fight back and you win a game like this. Um, were you guys expecting the same things? Were you expecting to have to punch up or was it a, you know, just something that you were, you were ready to go no matter what? I mean, we know that, uh, on paper, like all the teams we're facing, I mean, it's kind of punching up, you know, they, they, on paper, they do have the good ranks. They've been, they've been playing, had some good matches and we've kind of been, a, in a little bit of a losing streak personally as the hugging as a team but you know we knew we came that we, we came to get here we came to came to win and that's that's exactly what we did i also have to ask what is behind you there is there is so many lights yeah, so we, got, I am... <laughs> we got a lot of lights going on uh so we're kind of on like a stage of like a little it's a new esports center so got a little Ooh, bit of a background sick. a little backdrop going on here so awesome so i mean it looks pretty cool so I guess you know, let's, let's talk about that because so Butler University is not something that's been present in Counter Strike. It's not something that I, I don't think Vitz and I or I have really seen uh, before. So, so talk to me. What's this program? Uh, what do you guys got going for you guys? Uh, what's Butler University all about? Yeah. So as far as I'm, as far as I know, Butler hasn't really had a CS team for a little bit. I think they had one a couple years ago. I'm a first year, um, and I got here and I played Counter Strike and saw there wasn't any active Counter-Strike team. So I went ahead and uh, tried to make one, get some recruits going. Uh, now we're back. I mean, it's a very Valorant heavy, Rocket League heavy, and League of Legends heavy community. So it was really good to find some guys, um, get them all together, and just, just start playing CS competitively. It's a game we all love, and it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, no. Good here. Yeah. Right. So let, let's talk about your performance, particularly Phantom, because you were a guy that we we highlighted here on the desk is um, I think it was the the key double kills in the mid round. That was kind of your role. It felt like um, is that something that you you plan for? Are you kind of a mid round guy? What does your role look like within this team? And how have you been able to perform so well? Yeah, definitely like mid round rifles are where I kind of excel at, um, whether it's intentional or not. It just kind of so happens to be that way. I can just kind of pick up the frags that I get left behind and try and get the trades. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily intentional, but I mean, it's just what the, the play style I have is what I'm comfortable with and it seems to be working out decently well. And I mean, I try to make it work out the best I can. Bernie, any questions for Adam? Uh, not really. I'm just I'm really happy with how you guys came to show up today. Uh, um, it was a pleasant surprise and we had a really fun time watching you guys. Well, much. Phantom, with that, uh, final question for you. Anybody you have you'd like to shout out, say hello to while you ha we have you on the stream? Oh, no. Uh, any of the Butler people watching, much love. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Got to thank my mom, my dad, you know. Um, Let's go. All stuff, but it's all good. <laughs> always, always love the mom shout out. Always yes, the best. Phantom delivering. Yeah. Uh, Phantom, thanks so much, man. Pl a great interview. Uh, we hope to see you more on the, on the stream here uh, in the future. Love you. Thank you so much for having us, and I look forward to it. Sweet. With that, we say goodbye to Phantom, and we say hello back to you. Unfortunately, it's almost time for us to say goodbye as uh, we have just wrapped things up. The good news is that we'll be back. The bad news is going to be back on Monday. 
Is, uh, or actually, we might have Monday off. I don't know. It's next week. One of the two, either Monday or Tuesday, will be jumping back in with so much more from the Nace Star League. We got games across the board. Rocket League, Overwatch, Call of Duty, R6, and Super Smash Brothers, as well as Valorant, Counter-Strike. It's got a lot of fun. Make sure that you're tuning in. Same exact place here. We'll be here next week. Myself, Vincent, alongside Birdie Box. It's been our pleasure. Peace out and good night.